Printers. As much as we'd all like to realise the fantasy of a paperless office, printers are here to stay, at least for a while. Using a Windows 2003 server to manage your printers means that those printers can be made available to users on any client platform, including Unix, Linux, Netware and Apple users, as well of course as those users running previous versions of Windows. Now before we even get going and show you how to install a printer, it's important to understand the distinction between printers and print devices. When Microsoft refer to a printer, they're really talking about software, in other words, the print driver. When talking about the physical printer, the box that spits out the paper, Microsoft refer to that as the print device. So with those definitions in mind, there are two types of printers. Locally attached printers and network printers. A local printer is the type that you plug directly into the server, normally using a USB or a parallel cable. A network printer is connected to the network itself, plugged into a hub or a switch, and contains a print server that can communicate over the network using TCP IP. Now an example of this would be an HP printer that has a JetDirect card, which is basically just its own network card. So it plugs straight into a hub or switch, and you can allocate it a static IP address or use DHCP to get an address, and then you'll communicate with the printer over the network. Every physical printer that you have connected to a Windows 2003 is represented as a logical printer. A logical printer defines the characteristics of the printer itself, and it's made up of the driver, the printer settings, and other properties that control how your server communicates with the physical print device. So in order to be able to add a printer, you must be a member of the administrators, power users, print operators or server operator groups, anything less and you'll be denied the ability to add a printer to your server. Okay, to add a printer, we'll simply click on start and then select printers and faxes. Now as you can see, we currently don't have any real printers defined. So to add a new printer, we can simply double click on the add printer icon or we can right click and select add printer. And this just starts up the add printer wizard, so we'll click next. Now we need to tell the wizard if our printer is a locally attached printer or if it's a network printer. In our case, we don't have a local printer attached, but it really doesn't matter, we can still add one in anyway. So we'll leave the default at a locally attached printer, but I'm going to uncheck the box here, which will attempt to automatically detect the printer because we don't actually have one connected. So we'll leave it at local printer attached to this computer, and then we'll choose next. Next we get to choose the printer port. Now the default is to use a local parallel port, but you can choose from any other additional ports you might have connected the printer to, such as a serial support. Now down the bottom here we can also choose to create a new port. Now if we select this option, we can create a standard TCP IP port that we can use so our users can connect over the network and print to our new printer. So we'll select that option and then we'll choose next. And this starts up the Add TCP IP Printer Port Wizard. So again, I'm just going to click Next. And the first thing we'll have to do is tell the wizard the IP address of the printer. So I'm just going to enter in the IP address of this server, which is 192.168.0.11. And you'll notice that the wizard automatically gives the port a name of the IP address we just entered, prefixed by this IP underscore. Now, if that's all OK, We'll just click on Next. Now because we don't actually have a physical printer connected, we get a message telling us that our network card couldn't be identified, but that's okay. Here you'll get to manually choose your network card from different vendors such as an HP Jet Direct card and so on. Now you can also choose Custom and click on the setting button to define your own printer port if you like, but for our purposes I'll just click cancel and we'll leave the default as the standard generic network card. So we'll click on next and we're done. Now we just get this summary screen telling us what we've done which is to create a printer port on the IP address of 192.168.0.11. So we'll click on finish and this will fire up the add printer wizard so that we can define the actual printer that we have. 
Windows Server 2003 does come with a great deal of printers already defined in the drivers.cab file which is located on the Server 2003 CD and you can simply locate your printer manufacturer over here on the left hand side of this window and select the driver that matches the printer model you have on the right. Now if your printer doesn't appear here or you have a new printer driver you can select the have disk button and install your drivers manually or you can go to the Windows Update site and download any new drivers that are there. But for our purposes we'll just go over here and we'll select OK an HP model and we'll scroll down and we'll choose I don't know how about an HP LaserJet 5SI and we'll choose next. Now we'll need to define a name for our printer. Now based on which printer we chose earlier, a default name will be listed for us. And you can see that the wizard has already given us a name of HP LaserJet 5SI. Now we're also asked, do we want to make this printer the default Windows printer? And this just simply means that if we don't specify a specific printer to print to, then our documents will automatically go to the default printer. So I'll leave the settings here as they are, and I'll just choose next. Now we have to choose a share name if we decide to share this printer. Now the default is to share the printer and it gives it an automatic truncated 8 character share name. Now the reason it only gives you an 8 character share name is so that it remains compatible with older versions of MS-DOS. So I'll rename this to something a little bit more meaningful, anywhere up to 31 characters. So we'll just leave it at H3 LaserJet 5SI and we'll click next. Now because I've just set this to over 8 characters, we just get a little message telling us that people who are using DOS might have problems connecting to this printer. That's fine, I'll click yes, and then we're given the option now of providing some location information about our printer. So under our location, I'm just going to say that this printer happens to be on the second floor, and we'll say that it's a sales printer. And then we'll click next. Okay, do we want to print a test page? Well, that's probably a good idea if this is a new printer that we're setting up. But I'm going to say no, as we don't actually have a physical printer connected to our server, so I'll just click Next. Now we'll just get our standard summary screen telling us what we're about to create. So we'll click Finish, and we're done. Now the drivers will then copy across to our server, and our printer will be created and shared out if you happen to have specified that in the wizard. Okay, well here we can see that our printer's been created. Now notice the black tick above the icon. This provides a visual cue that this printer is now our default printer. This simply means that if we have several logical printers installed on our computer and we just perform a quick print in an application, it will automatically send that print job to the default printer. Now of course we can only have one default printer, so if we create additional logical printers on this computer, we will get the option to make the new printers the default or just add them to our list here. Now if you do want to make a printer a default, you can do so at any time by simply right clicking on it and selecting to set as default printer. Okay, well our printer's installed and we're ready to print, it's that simple. So let's take a look at some of the printer options that we have with this printer. If we right click on the printer and select properties, this will bring up the printer properties dialog box. Now one thing I will point out before we get too far into this topic is that you may find your printer properties dialog box differs slightly from mine. Different printers and driver versions will have different options. Now whilst most of the tabs you'll see will be the same, some of the options are printer specific and because of this you might see some different settings. Okay, now on the general tab you'll find out some information about the printer. The name is automatically populated when we install the printer now if you are installing printers in an enterprise, I'd recommend making use of these fields, especially this location field as it can assist you in finding printers later on. Now to use this feature, you must enable printer location tracking in group policy and later on in this video, we'll show you how to do just that. Now the next thing we can see here is the printer model and some specific information about the printer's capabilities. So if we click on the Printing Preferences button, we can set options such as the page order, duplex options, and whether we want to use landscape or portrait printing. On the Advanced button, we can set things like what size paper we'll use in our printer, what quality DPI do we want to print in, 
and whether it can be printed in economy mode to use less toner. Now the paper quality tab lets us specify which paper tray we'll use for this printer, whether the printer automatically selects a tray or one that you manually specify. And we can also specify what type of media we'll use, such as regular paper, whether we want to print with labels or perhaps transparencies. Now the next tab we have over here is the sharing tab and it's kind of like any other sharing tab you would expect to see for sharing folders. So we won't go into this in too much detail as we've already covered sharing in other videos but there's two things that I'd like to point out on this tab. The first thing is when you select the share this printer button you have another checkbox that appears here to list in the directory. Now this is referring to Active Directory of course and it will automatically create a shared printer for you to search on. Now we'll leave this option selected and we'll come back later and talk more about it. Now the second thing on this screen I want to talk about is the additional drivers button. Here you can see which printer drivers that you've installed on your server. Now if you're using a different operating system you can see down the list if the drivers are installed. Now we've only installed this one here and we can see that the drivers are installed for Windows 2000 XP and Server 2003. So to install a new driver we'd simply check the box next to the operating system that you want the drivers for, click OK and the files will automatically copy across from the Windows 2003 CD-ROM. Now on the ports tab here is where you can set the port that the printer communicates through. Now if the printer is a local printer, you would normally expect to see the printer connected through the LPT port or a USB port. Now down here you can see the TCP IP port that we created a moment ago. Now at the bottom here we have two checkboxes. Bidirectional printing support simply means that the printer communicates both ways between the client and the printer. So you can see the status of print jobs for example. Now the next one we have here to enable printer pooling which is disabled by default enables you to set up one logical print device for multiple printers. So let's assume for the moment that I have two of these physical HP 5SI printers attached to my server. What this box enables me to do is select the two printers up here in the list and have my clients send their print jobs to the one logical printer. Now this enables me to use the two physical printers to share the printing load. Now this is really useful, especially when a member of the sales department starts running his monthly 500 page report and stops everyone else from using the printer. Now automatically the other printer can kick in and start printing everyone else's print jobs. Now to be able to use printer pooling though, you'll have to have two printers that can use the same print driver. So typically this means that you really need to have two identical printers and they must have the same amount of memory installed. Now on the advanced tab, we have options that allow us to control access to the printer based on the time of day and set a priority on the printer traffic. In fact, let's go and do that now. What I'll do is I'll just move this out of the way here and I'll double click on add printer which of course starts up the add printer wizard so I'll click next. Now I'm going to leave the default of a local printer and choose next. Now this time we'll choose to use an existing port and we'll choose the standard TCP IP port that we created earlier. We'll select that and choose next. Now again we need to choose a printer so we'll leave the default here of our HP LaserJet 5SI and choose next. Now it tells us that we already have an HP LaserJet 5SI driver. Do we want to keep this driver which is recommended or do we want to replace it with perhaps a newer one? So we'll leave the default here to keep our existing driver after all we only installed it a few minutes ago so we'll choose next. And now we need to give our printer a name. Now I'm going to make this one here the managers printer so in between these brackets here I'm just going to type in managers. Now do we want to use this as the default printer? I'll choose no, we'll leave our other 5SI up here at the default printer and we'll choose next. Now for our share name we'll make this the same as the printer name we specified a moment ago and I'll choose next and say yes, I don't care if DOS people can't use it. Now for the location we're going to say that this one too is on the second floor but this one is a manager's printer. 
Okay, we'll choose next. Do we want to print a test page? Well, no, we don't have a physical printer, so we'll say no. We'll choose next and finish. Okay, so we can now see the two printers that we have configured on our server. Now we have two logical printers that represent the one physical printer that we supposedly have on the second floor. Okay, so now if we right click on our manager's printer and select properties, we'll then come back up here to the advanced tab. Now we can set the priority of this printer to two. And that means if that a print job is sent to this printer, at the same time a job is sent to our other printer, then the manager's job will print first, as it has a higher priority. So remember, the higher the priority here, the higher the print priority. Now we can also change the driver being used by clicking on new driver button, and this will of course launch a wizard which allows us to install new drivers. Now our default here is to spool our documents first which makes our program, such as Microsoft Word, finish its printing process faster without making it wait for the printer to finish. Now we can choose to start printing after the last page of our document is spooled, or the entire document, or we can start printing immediately, which is the default. Now if we don't want to spool any documents at all, we could print directly to the printer as well. Now, the hold mismatch document setting simply allows you to hold documents that have been printed using settings that differ from what you see here. So for example, when I hit print in Microsoft Word, let's say I choose to print it in duplex. But here within the properties of my printer, I've configured the printer not to use duplex. Now what would happen if I activate this setting, it will hold the document as the settings have been mismatched. Now next we have print spooled documents first, and this will do what it says and print documents that have already been spooled. This is before new documents, regardless of what priority has been set up the top here. So if a regular user on our lower priority printer has already spooled their document for printing, and along comes a manager with this higher priority printer and sends off his print job, then the user's document that's already been spooled will print first. Now we can also choose to keep printed documents rather than deleting them once they've been printed and we can enable advanced printing features for this printer if the printer supports them. Now we can also set the printer defaults such as portrait or landscape options and we've seen this before if we go back to our general tab and click on printing preferences we can see the exact same settings there. Okay so back on our advanced tab if you'd like to print a separator page so it makes identifying where a print job finishes and where the next job begins, you can click on the separator page button and then browse to the location where you have a separator page stored. Now once you click on browse you will see here four default separator pages that have already been included with Windows 2003. Now whilst a separator page does waste an additional piece of page for every print job, it does make it easier to locate your print job when a lot of people tend to print things and never collect them off the printer. Now on the security tab, we can control access to the printer via permissions. Now it's important to understand that by default, everyone can print to a printer and the creator owner or the user that sent the print job can also manage their own print jobs. So once a regular user sends a print job to this printer, they then assume the role of creator owner and have permission to manage their own jobs. However, members of the everyone group, and that is everyone, cannot manage the print jobs of another user unless they are a member of the administrators, print operators, or server operators groups. So if I wanted my managers only to be able to print to this printer, I'd have to create a group for my managers and add them to the ACL here. And then I'd uncheck the read option on the everyone group, or I would just simply remove it altogether. Now if you click on the advanced button and then the auditing tab, you can also log who has been printing or attempting to print documents to your printer. You will need to have configured auditing and group policy first if you want this to take effect. Now once you've configured this, you'll see printing events appear in the Windows event log. Now finally, on our device settings tab, we can set options which are specific to the device. Now this tab will certainly differ depending on the printer installed. 
Now here you'll generally have settings such as what type of paper that you wish to use, whether it's letter or A4 or A3 and so on, the amount of memory that you have installed and things like that. Okay, we'll cancel this for now and we'll right click in our printer window and select server properties. Now this is where we can set up forms. Forms are used to define the standard sizes for our paper, our envelopes and our transparencies. Now here's where we'll see a whole bunch of standard international sizes for things like A4 and A5 and A3 and so on. Now if you have some specific size stationery that you use for your company, let's say it's a unique size, you can configure that here. So simply come down here and click on create a new form and choose either metric centimeters or English inches and set the width and length of the stationery as well as the default margins. And up here, you simply give it a name and then click on OK. So I'll give this form a name of test form and then we'll just click OK. Now if I go and right click on my printer again and select properties, followed by the printing preferences button and then click on the advanced button, I can now change the paper size to my test form. Now it is unlikely that you will set a default paper size to a custom size for the entire printer. So what I'll do is I'll cancel this and we'll choose cancel again and then we'll come up here to the device settings tab. Now here we can choose a specific paper tray for our custom form. So if we have standard letter paper in our printer for general printing purposes, but our custom form paper in say tray number one, we could simply select that, then choose our test form. And now when users need to print to our custom stationery, they can simply print to tray number one. Okay, so we'll cancel this and we'll go and take a look at our server properties again. Now on the ports tab, we can add, delete and configure ports for our server. We can also configure drivers that we've installed on this server. And of course we can see all of the other drivers that we have on our server, not just one for a specific printer. Now on the advanced tab, we can see the default path of our print spooler, which is under our system32 directory. Now you can change that if you wish, but bear in mind that if you do change it, ensure that we also change the permissions on the new location so that everyone just can't get in there and start deleting things. Now also bear in mind that if you have disk quoted on the drive you wish to change the spool folder to, your users might not be able to print large documents as the spool job that is generated might breach the limits for users that are set in your quota. Now these first three checkboxes which are all set by default, simply log errors, warnings and informational events to the Windows event log. Now beep on errors of remote documents will display the warning balloon that you see on Windows 2000 clients and above when a document fails to print. Show informational notifications for local printers will display the status of all the print jobs that have been sent to this print server by the local user. And then we have show informational notifications for network printers, which displays the status of print jobs that are set by the local user to other print servers. And next we have notify when remote documents are printed. And this lets users of Windows 95 through to Windows NT know when their documents are printed with a pop-up prompt. Although personally I think it's rather annoying, so it is off by default. But if you do select this option, you also have the option of notifying the computer and not the user when documents are printed. All right, now even though we don't actually have a physical printer, let's go and print a document anyway. So I'll go and click on Start, All Programs, Accessories, and I'll fire up WordPad. Now if I just print the current document which doesn't contain anything, just using the printer icon, you'll see the printer icon over here change to represent one document that's ready to print. So if we double click on this printer, you'll see the printer queue containing our document. From here, if we right click on the document, we can pause the document printing, restart the print job, or cancel it entirely. Now if we select properties, here we can see some information about the job, such as the size of the print job, who sent it, which in our case was the administrator account, 
We can also change the priority of the print job as well. Now, if this happens to be an important document or an important user, we could raise the priority of this print job so that it gets spat out on the printer faster. Or let's say it's an end of month report that's a heap of pages and it's not really important, it doesn't really have as much priority as such, we could either choose a low priority or we could come down here and schedule this job to print at a later time. Okay, let's just cancel this now and we can see our job has actually errored out because there is no physical printer. And you'll recall that I mentioned something earlier called printer location tracking. All right, well, let's talk about that now. Now, when you go searching Active Directory for a printer to connect to and use, in small companies, that's normally not much of a problem. But in a large company, especially one that has offices in different cities, states, or countries, well, it can be confusing which printer you should use and finding one that's local to you. Now, that's where printer location tracking can help. So to set up printer location tracking, we need to configure it in two places. Firstly, we need to enable it in group policy. So let's fire up Active Directory Users and Computers. We'll click on Start, Administrative Tools, and then launch Active Directory Users and Computers. Now we'll come over here and we'll right click on our domain and we'll select Properties, followed by the Group Policy tab, and then we'll choose to edit our default domain policy. Okay, this fires up the Group Policy Object Editor. So under our Computer Configuration, we'll expand Administrative Templates, and then we'll select Printers. So to enable printer location tracking, we'll come over here to the right and we'll right click on pre-populate printer search location text and choose properties. Then we'll select the enabled button and then click on OK. Now because this is a computer policy that takes effect when the computer is restarted, we'll do that now. So what I'll do is I'll pause this video and restart the server. Okay, now our server has just rebooted, so we'll move on to the second part of printer location tracking configuration, which is to configure sites. So we'll click on Start, Administrative Tools, and we'll launch Active Directory Sites and Services. Now, because this is a new installation of Windows Server 2003, if we expand Sites, we only have one site defined, and that is the default first name site. So I'm just going to right click on this, and select rename and I'll call this one New York just to make it a little easy to understand what we're doing here. Now notice that I haven't included a space in the New York name and that's because this configuration field doesn't like spaces. Now because sites need to be associated with a subnet we'll need to add a subnet that represents our New York site. So we'll right click on subnets and select new subnet. Now we'll need to associate the 192.168.0.0 address and mask of 255.255.255.0 with the New York site and then we'll click on OK. Now if we right click on our subnet that we've just configured and select properties followed by the location tab we can define a location that is within New York. Now this location can be practically anything you want. It could be the first floor, the second floor, the meeting room, the janitor's office, the toilet, practically anything. Although it is unlikely that you'll have a printer in your toilet, but hey, if you want to create one there, you can. It'll probably be useful if you run out of toilet paper. Anyway, I'll just call this location, sales department, and click on OK. Now if we go back to our printers window by clicking on Start and then selecting Printers and Faxes, we'll right click on our manager's printer and select Properties. Now under the Location field here, if we select the Browse button and expand our entire directory, we have the option of choosing the Sales Department. So we'll select that and choose OK and then OK again. Now what we can do is right click and choose to add a new printer. Now this time we'll choose to use a network printer and we'll leave the default option to find the printer in Active Directory. So we'll choose next again. Now notice that because we are in the 192.168 subnet which happens to be in New York, 
the location field has automatically been populated for us. Now if I don't type in a printer name and just hit find now, what happens is only those printers that are in my New York subnet will be found and returned for me to choose from. So as you can see here, only one single printer has been returned, even though we have two printers installed on this server. And that's the power of printer location tracking. The searching for a printer that's close to me has now been made easy. All I have to do is double click on this printer and the print driver will be downloaded from the server to my client computer and I'm ready to print. So I'll just click next and finish and now everything's configured. Okay, now the next thing I wanna talk about is internet printing. Now by default, internet printing isn't installed so we'll need to go and set it up. So we'll click on start, control panel, add or remove programs. Then we'll need to come down here and select add remove windows components. Now for internet printing, we need to have IIS installed and IIS is an application role so we'll double click on application server and double click on IIS. Now we'll need to come down here and select internet printing which automatically selects the additional required components that are needed to support internet printing such as the IIS MMC and some common files and if we click OK we'll see that internet information services will also be installed so we'll click on OK and click next. Now make sure that you do have your Windows Server 2003 CD-ROM in the drive as you will need it for the installation of the required files. In the meantime, I'm just gonna pause this video and we'll return once the installation has completed. Okay, all of the files have installed, so we'll click on finish. And now we're ready to go. So to access internet printing, all we need to do is fire up Internet Explorer and then navigate to the name of our server, which is server01, followed by printers, and that will connect to the print server on this server. So we'll hit enter, and here we can see which printers that we have on this server, the status of the printers, and how many jobs they have queued. Now if we click on one of the printers, we can see the documents that are in the print queue. Now I'll just quickly fire up WordPad again, and we'll choose to print a document to our manager's printer, again even though nothing actually exists there, and if I just go and hit refresh, you'll see here that we do have a document listed. And if we select the radio button here next to the print job, we can then choose from any of these options down here. We could pause the print job, we could resume it if we paused it, and we can also cancel the print job. Now if we choose the properties hyperlink, we can see the properties of the printer. And if we choose all printers, that will simply take us back to the front page. So there you have internet printing. There's not a lot to it really, but that's its beauty. It's easy to configure and easy to use. Okay, the next thing we should take a look at is the performance of our print server. So if we click on Start, Administrative Tools, we'll come down here and launch the Performance MMC. Now in our Performance Monitor, if we expand Performance Logs and Alerts, we'll right click on Counter Logs and select new log settings. Now we need to give our new performance log a name, so I'm just gonna call this one print server and then click on OK. Now here we can see the default path to where our performance data will be stored, so we'll just come down here and click on add counters and there's a few that we need to concern ourselves with. So from the performance object drop-down box, we'll select the drop-down box and we'll select process. Now, in the left hand pane, we'll leave the default at percentage processor time. And in the right hand pane, we'll scroll down and we'll select spool SV, which is the printer spooler service, and then we'll come down here and choose add. Now this counter will show us the percentage of the CPU time that is consumed by our spooler service. Now we'll also add in the handle count object for our spooler service as well, and click on add. Now the handle count object will show us the number of handles that are opened by the print spooler process. And this is important for us to track as each open handle will consume resources on our server. 
If this value is excessively high, then it's likely that there may be open handles not being released from clients that are no longer actively printing. Now if we scroll down and select pull paged bytes, this shows us the number of bytes that are being used by our spooler process. Now we'll also add in the pull non-page bytes as well. Now the difference between these two is that non-page bytes remain in memory and are not written to disk, whereas paged pull bytes are written to disk from memory. Now I also recommend coming down here and adding in virtual bytes and even the virtual bytes peak object as well, as these performance objects show the size in bytes of the virtual address space which are used by our print spooler process. And finally, I'd also throw in page file bytes object as well to see how much of your page file is being used by the printer spooler. Now next, under our performance object drop down box, we'll choose the print queue option. Now over here on the right, we can see all of the printers that we have on this server. Now rather than choosing an individual printer to monitor, although there's certainly nothing wrong with doing that, we'll choose all instances and this will monitor all of our printers in one go. Now on the left, you can see that we have quite a few options here, ranging from how many jobs are being printed to the number of errors and so on. And if you happen to want proof that that rogue remote administrator isn't putting paper in the printer, you can even monitor out of paper errors if you like. Again, so make your selections and click add. Now if we're done, we'll click on close and we can see the objects that we've added. And we're done. Now, if we select our counter logs on the left hand side of our MMC, we'll see our new print server log in green here in the right running and collecting information about our print server. So make sure that you monitor your print server, especially if it happens to be a dedicated print server for a number of printers. It's amazing what sort of information you'll find out about your printers when you actively monitor what's going on. Now the final thing I want to talk about before we wrap up our discussion about printers is some basic troubleshooting steps. Now printing under Windows Server 2003 shouldn't give you too many problems. It's pretty reliable. But that said, you will run into problems once in a while, so the first thing you need to do is identify the problem. Is the problem with the printer, the application or the network? Is the problem isolated to a single user or does it affect everyone? If no one can print, check out the easy things first. Is the printer online? Is there toner or ink or paper in the printer? Check to ensure that there aren't any paper jams. If there are, clear them out first and ensure that paper isn't packed in too tight into the printer. Is the print server running? Check the server is up. Check the print queue to see if a corrupt document is holding up other jobs. Can you ping the printer by IP or host name? If this is a new printer, then ensure that the right drivers are loaded on the server. Check the printer ports. Make sure they're pointing to the correct port and that they haven't been changed. Ensure that there is enough disk space on the server. I don't know how many times I've been called to check out a printer problem to find out the cause is disk space. In fact, this is one of the first things I normally check. It's quite common for people to leave the spooler in the default location and ignore it so it fills up the C drive. Now finally, make sure that the services are started. This includes the printer spooler service and the www service as well. Restarting the spooler is often a good choice, but bear in mind if that's a single printer that's giving you grief, restarting the spooler will affect all printers on this printer server. Now remember that with the printer spooler service, if it fails twice within a minute, Windows will not attempt to restart it again. Now if you cannot restart the spooler, check the spool folder to see if there's any files left in it. Manually delete those files and then try and restart the spooler again. Okay, so what if it's only a few users that cannot print? Firstly, find out what these users have in common. Are they all printing from the same application? Are they all on the same subnet? Are they all using a certain operating system? For example, if they're all using Windows NT, then make sure that the drivers for Windows NT are installed. If you find that it's Windows 95, 98 or ME clients that can't print, Check to see if the print processor data type on the advanced tab of the printer properties is set to raw. If it's not, 
you'll find that these clients won't be able to print. Now what if it's only a single user that cannot print? We'll check to see if they can print from a different application. Check to see if they have the required permission to be able to use this printer. Or get another user to log onto their computer and try printing. If all else fails, a good old fashioned reboot might solve the problem. In this video we've discussed printing in detail. One of the most common administrative tasks you'll have as a Windows Server 2003 administrator, apart from managing users and folders, is managing printers. Now make sure you spend some time going through the options that are available with printers as there are a lot of them. Now in larger environments, consider using printer location tracking. Now it's not only good for performance reasons as you no longer have to endure the pain of retrieving a long list of printers that are nowhere near you, but it also reduces the amount of calls you're likely to get from users trying to find a printer that's close by. Now finally, we looked at internet printing, monitoring the performance of your print server and troubleshooting printing. Managing your printers is a challenge and I hope this video has brought you a little closer to mastering the printers in your environment.